Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Cool FM Live for our Cochise County Sports Show. I'm Dave Davies. About to step into the shot is the beautiful Paul Pizzy Quarter. <laughs> he was just showing you the uh, the new menu here at Sierra Vista Golf Club at Pueblo del Sol. They, they have a new food menu. They also have a new special. Look, by the way, look behind me over here, folks. It is 81 degrees outside. It's beautiful. The course is open. They have a new special, uh, active duty military. After 11 o'clock, $59 gets you lunch and all the golf you can golf. So that is one uh, one heck of a special. And there he is. There's the big guy. Oh, they got the card now too. Where uh, I don't I don't know the details. Cheaper of it. golf. They were telling us a little bit about and, uh, it. Drinks and entrees. Yeah, there's all kinds of new things going on at Sierra Vista Golf Club at Pueblo del Sol. Come down here and check that out. It's going to be great. And as always, this is brought to you by Synergy Home Care of Sierra Vista. Synergy Home Care serves all of Cochise County and all of Santa Cruz County. So if you or know in you or you know anyone that whatever I'm trying to say, that struggles with activities of daily living, give Synergy a call at 520-685-1035. Sorry, I'm trying to do a million different things right now. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah he's always got <laughs> the wheels are always turning. And uh, and as always, thank you Something for jumping back on board. Uh, Texas Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Uh, thank you, Ashley and Jaime, for jumping back on board with us. Um, I'm a roadie. I will be at Roadhouse tonight. So come on down, Tuesday night. There ain't no football on you. You got nothing better to do. Come out dinner with me. No, oh. All we have to do is check the high school sports show next week, everyone. Rankings, official AIA rankings are coming out for the 1A and 2A teams, so stay tuned for that next week. Uh, before we get started, um, just a real quick shout-out. We were in Benson, Arizona last Friday when they played on the Tombstone Yellow Jackets. Shout-out to Olivia for the new hat, by the way. Um, but I just want to give uh, well wishes uh, my best to Hank Moody. Yes. Hank Moody went down in that game with an injury, a collarbone injury. Uh, Hank Moody will not be joining us for the rest of the year, but he's only a sophomore. We will see Hank again. Hank, keep your spirits up. We'll see you soon. Yeah, that was a scary situation. Ambulance was on the field. It's good. And that's what I try to make mention on the broadcast is, you know, obviously we never want to use the word paralysis or anything like that, especially talking about high school kids. So I was just so encouraged to see him moving all of his extremities and uh, collarbone. Uh, after that play, this is probably the best case scenario for Hammer and Hank Moody. Yeah, for how long he was year. on the ground. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and again, yeah. Hank oh. Moody. We know you make other teams irritable. We know you'll be back, baby. <laughs> we know you'll be back. So here we go, folks. What we're going to run down today? High school, obviously. Dave's going to ask me some questions about pros. Then he's going to rant a little bit. I don't think he's going to rant today, to be honest with you. Well, no that's part thing. of the thing. That's part of the whole thing. No, no, no spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. Uh, we will run down what happened in all of Cochise County. Uh, St. David suffering a loss against Mogollon. Now, they told me it was Mogollon in the chat, but that's spelled M-O-G-O-L-L-O-N. So there's no E anywhere, so we're going to call him Mogollon. Mogollon. And I've decided I'm calling him Baba Kavari because it sounds so much better than Baba Quivir. So, yeah, no, yeah, we ran into the coaches at Denny's after the Benson game, yeah. and we ran into St. David coaches, and they, were just, they, they honestly thought they played a really good game, and things just didn't go their way. Yeah, and it, it is what it is. Defensively, they'll get it shored up, and we saw all the kids in there, and you know they were taking it a little bit hard, so we tried to give them their space. But, yeah, we absolutely love going to St. David and Benson as well. But that, that, that's setting up a big one this Friday, boy, so, let me tell you, because oh. Val Union is hot. Oh, St. Man. David lost the game, so <laughs> oh my for goodness. The power rankings, everybody. Maybe there's some changes because Buena also upset from Tucson Magnet High this weekend, and that's not what we like to see. However, I think the teams are more evenly I, matched than a lot of people were leading on. I told the boys, because they sat here with all that confidence, I was like, you lose one, I'm going to let you know about it. No more. That's the only one you're allowed the whole year. Sometimes, especially in high school sports, people say a loss is a good thing, get you back on track, let you know that. Um, Maybe you don't have superpowers like you thought at first, and maybe you can lose if you don't focus up. All two A teams are going to play each other this weekend, Dave. Can't wait begun. for that one. And like you just mentioned, St. David at Valley Union. So the Cochise County rivalries starting back up. Three teams playing each other. Uh, update, St. Well, David. Three games, six teams. Whatever it is. St. David and Valley Union will have a broadcast team out there. It's not going to be us. I know I promised, but... I'm a liar, I guess. Uh, but that was the There's of the only season. two of us, and There's we don't even make these decisions most of the time. We will be at Bisbee for Benson and Bisbee. We were going to split up, 
But then Cool FM said, the hell you are, so we're going to well, be together. Cool FM wants to put the graphics on the yeah. game and have the game of the week, so it will require all hands on deck. So we will be in Bisbee this week for Benson. We will have a team in Wilcox. For Tombstone, it, for and, Tombstone Wilcox. and Wilcox. There will be a team out there as well. So I'm gonna text That's what we've been told. I'm going to text Mr. McGinnis, the athletic director, make sure there's a spot set up for Cool FM. But, yeah, so we will have everybody represented this week. And then we will be doing Wilcox next week. As always, folks, this is live, so don't hesitate to get in the chat. Give us some questions or maybe react to what we said before we get started here. And, Dave, speaking of getting started, we are going to start with the American Leadership Academy of Sierra Vista, who got their first win ever against Victory Futures Academy. They will be at AJO High, however you say that, on the 27th. Going into that game, one and one. Hey, they're ahead of schedule. Marine didn't win a game their first year. They did. Oh, they did. Hampton. Oh, that's right. Two wins. He two and five. Two five and one. Either way, congratulations to ALA um, head coach Dave Davies, Paul Quarter. Send us a message. Reach out to us. Let us know a little bit about what's going on with ALA football. Absolutely. Please and give us a hat. Now give us a hat. Because you, you might have jumped up in the power rankings this week. You never know. Yeah, yeah. So like, <laughs> reach out to one of us. Let us know what's going on. So no stats on the game here, but congratulations to ALA. I know it was broadcast on Cool FM. At least I'm pretty about 99% sure it was broadcast. I believe on it cool. was. I know it was broadcast, and I think it was Cool FM. That's going to take us to our other Canyon Athletic team. That's going to be the Berean Academy Eagles, who won by forfeit against Canyon State. So that's going to get them up to 2-2, two and two, still 0-2 and in sections, the Berean Academy Eagles. And they have a big one on the 26th against Heritage Academy. Big no football, it, it is, obviously. It, we, we had our warm-up month. It has begun. It's time to get it on. Speaking of no stats, the Valley Union Blue Devils, they always give us stats. We always know what's going on with Dela Cruz and Mitchell and yeah, Richardson yeah, yeah. and all them. But they did win 52-20 to over San Manuel, and they will host the St. David Tigers. As Gerald Morgan in the chat says, hi, guys. How you doing, Gerald? They will host the St. David Tigers on the 26th next week, or 27th, sorry, next week in the big 1A Cochise County rivalry. I don't know if it has a name. If it does, someone tell me in the chat because that's a big one. Here, here, you keep going. I'm going to do something real quick with our hats. You keep going. Okay. Well, good. <laughs> Boom. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Boom. Boom. All up over the Synergy logo. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> Wait, we need a hat. Benson got us a hat. No. Yeah, yeah, we got a new Benson hat. No, I was just saying, we got some games this week, so boom, boom, boom. And yes, Synergy, we know Synergy's there, but yes, boom, boom, <laughs> boom. We got some games this week, baby. So none of our 1A teams put in stats except for the St. David Tigers, who we talked about a little bit, suffered their first loss of the season. Two top five teams going at it in 1A. St. David now drops to 4-1. and one. They still are 3-0 and oh in sections, and they lost 36-66 to 66 over Mogollon. They will play at Valley Union on the 27th. We do have stats for him. So I've been saying Vincent Sicariello's name wrong this whole time. What is it? <laughs> it's Sicariello. Sicariello, okay. I think. He went. He threw 10 of 23 for 193 yards, three touchdowns, but two picks in that ball game. This, and big games turnovers matter even more, yep. Dave. Uh, the team rushed for over 100 yards again, led by Chase Pacheco, who had 17 carries for 76 yards. Cedar Haney had 11 carries for 57 yards, so that's 133 yards between the two of them. Haney did score a touchdown in this game. Gannon Carafa, and there's been a few great wide receivers coming out, and a lot of people battling for that all coach easy and wide receiver. Right? That's going to be a tough one this year. It's gonna, he had four catches for 109 yards and a touchdown. Grayson Merrill also had three catches for 78 yards and a touchdown as well. Roman Tilton also had a touchdown receiving. And our pancake blocks are going to be brought to you by Top Pacheco, Howard Gorman, and Luke Haymor. Oh, Howard Gorman, that's a new name. Well, he was, he's been there a couple times. So oh, okay. Just trying to get the big guys some shine, you know. Oh, no, of course. Defensively for the St. David Tigers, uh, I think it was, let me go down, I, I wrote him differently. Luke Haymor led the team in tackles with 13, followed by Gannon Carafa with 11. Luke also pitched in a tackle for loss. Chase Pacheco pitched in two tackles for losses. Cedar Haney pitched in three tackles for losses. Top Pacheco pitched in three tackles for losses. And the only sack of the game, which is weird when we talk about St. David, came from Cedar Haney. So, again, St. David playing very well, just not well enough. And that 30 points kind of got out of hand in the second half. They were right there in the first half. And 
Right, that's just that's just eight man football. Uh, like you said, yeah, you get you can't you know you can't be a world beater. I mean, like you know you get you want those losses are sometimes a good thing. You yeah. know where you don't think that you can just destroy everybody. So St. David's gonna have a chance to get it right against a very very hot Valley Union team. That's where I would say, that's where I would disagree because St. David's always there. Yeah. They're always there at the end, so they know there's going to be adversity. They're, you know, they're they're state semifinalists, state finalists, and everything. Yeah. Just yeah, and everything, just about every year. So they know uh, how important games are. But like you said, maybe maybe they were. They were blowing teams out sixty-five to seven. So yeah. this could be a wake-up call for St. David if they needed one. Yeah, that's going to be one of those ones where uh, I think uh, Logan Seeley, our, our young friend Logan Seeley, is going to be doing the Valley Union St. David game. I will go home after our game and go watch that game. So hopefully no spoilers for me on that one. <laughs> Logan Seeley from the Berean Academy Eagles. Yeah, no, he's doing duty. a great job, by the way. Logan, by the way, if you're watching it, you're doing a great job. And before we get over, get out of our one in action, you know? Gerald Morgan back in the chat says, the Sierra Vista Colts youth football team lost to the Tucson Jaguar youth football team 25-5 to on Saturday. This Saturday, the Colts play Tucson. They go to Tucson to play the 49ers at 2 p.m. Good luck to you, youth Colts. Yeah, I, and again, that's something that we would love to try to do, but again, we, we're men that wear many hats, and I, Saturday we'll uh, have a Thunder Mountain Wrestling. Yeah, well, and we have to still continue to work at our full-time job. So oh, we can yeah, pay the jobs bills. as well. <laughs> jobs as well. Like I said, I'll be at Roadhouse tonight. Roadhouse? Roadhouse. Oh, I didn't do that. I didn't meet you on that one. Yeah, you did. For the, oh, did yeah, I? Yeah, you did. This one. Yes. the first one, did I? Yeah. Wow, it's just second nature at this point. <laughs> but let's get over to the Douglas Bulldogs, who are on the verge of having a very down year. Now, section play hasn't started, and that's really when they picked up their, their season last year. But they lose to Ironwood Ridge 9-35 to to fall to 0-4, and, and they play Empire this Friday, it doesn't get any easier as Empire just lost to a 5A Pueblo team. Or beat them, I can't remember. Yeah, and like you said, like we said it last week and the week before, we saw Douglas play against Bisbee. They don't look like a winless team. They mm-hmm. they look better than that. So not sure what's going on with Douglas, but come on, Bulldogs. Come on, Yvonne Aguera. <laughs> come on, baby. Just pretend it's baseball and play really well. <laughs> they are really good at baseball as well. Yeah, they are. So no stats on the Douglas Bulldogs. That is going to take us over to the Buena Colts, getting early Colts coverage in today. I'm saving the two A teams for last because they all play each other. Buena did suffer an upset loss. That was another news outlet called it an upset. So I thought it was two evenly matched teams, but when you have everyone in Coach E saying it's an upset and then a Tucson news outlet saying it's an upset, it has to be an upset. Buena lost 29-42 to against Tucson Magnet Prep. And they will be at Pueblo this Friday on the 27th in a get-right game that they need to come out and ball out for. As a matter of fact, we should have a team at that game as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's going to be somebody at Buena. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're going we to have, have, have four coverage. games coming on Friday. We have Buena coverage all season long. Stay tuned for Cool FM. Yeah, yeah, so we'll have four games for you on Friday. So you want some high school football, you ain't got to leave the couch. Good. Even though you should come join us at live in one of these Good games. Is we'll be able to do some Buena basketball games. but Oh, you're <laughs> gosh darn right we will. Right, we petitioned to do a lot of games this season. We, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where it didn't Buena work out. Buena football is out of our control. Buena basketball belongs we'll be there. to me. We'll be there for that one. <laughs> well, jamming Booker belongs to me. <laughs> jamming at home. Let's get to some stats in that ball game. Nash Moore oh. continues. I don't know what you said. Nothing, nothing. Okay. Nash Moore continues his ascendancy to possibly the top quarterback in Cochise County as he throws 15 to 28 for 314 Ooh. yards, two touchdowns. Did also have two interceptions on the game, though. And we talked about turnovers in big games. It's usually there's only one team since 1991 is one when they've lost the turnover. <laughs> it was the Chiefs. I think it was the Bengals. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so uh, Buena playing from behind most of that game. Andres Benilla only had 89 yards, but he did do it on 15 carries. Michael Luan had nine carries for 50 yards. Scrappy also four catches for 80 yards. So they ran the ball very effectively, but playing from two scores down most of the time, that's gonna that's obviously going to have you throw the ball more and more and more. Yeah, we honestly, I, I was getting to the point where I was really expecting an undefeated season from the Buena Colts. Losses happen. It's okay. Make sure it's the only one. Mindy Krause in the chat says, Buena strong. That's funny because I do believe I do have Cooper Krause. And we can only imagine there's a relation there when we go to these small towns. Yeah, only one loss allowed, boy. That's all you get. Only one. I, I, want, I want one loss on the season. You said it, not me. 
The big game from Latavius T.J. Walker, his breakout game at wide receiver. We call him defensively all the time. Five catches, 137 yards, and two touchdowns. Woo. The receiver showing out this year for uh, Cochise County. Well, now you got all facets on the offense. Let's, let's, like I said, you get one loss. Let's turn this thing around. Go ahead and smoke Pueblo. Mindy Krause is related to Cooper Krause. That was, that was an easy guess. There's so many athletic family dynasties in these small towns, man, let me tell you. Jaden Thomas, I do believe, is probably the leading receiver for all of Cochise County, if it's not Grayson Merrill from St. David. Five catches for 95 yards in this game, so almost two receivers cracking the century mark for the Buena Colts. That'll happen when your quarterback throws for 314. Yeah, big game for, for Mr. Moore. He's having a big year. Tay Walker in the chat says, go TJ. Yeah, go TJ. Five one thirty seven and two touchdowns. Yeah, uh, let's talk about game. Cooper Kraus, who led the team in tackles with nine defensively. Uh, we have Daniel Bolin, I do believe, sc- chicken scratch handwriting, had a tackle for loss in this game. Emmanuel, oh man, I, I pronounce this Bacharski. Tell me that's not a football name. <laughs> that's a linebacker. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna guess that's a linebacker. <laughs> Emmanuel Bacharski had a tackle for loss and a sack, and Elias Dyson, stop me if you've heard this one before, had an interception, interception. for the, <laughs> the Winnie Colts. Unfortunately, just a little bit too l- not a enough. Ball. He is. Oh, Elias Dyson, and he, that's 5A he's getting these looks at, so he should be getting some D1 looks, you would assume, maybe if not U of A, somewhere else like New Mexico State or something like that. But that's the Buena Colts, a 29-42 to loss in the stat line. Aside from the turnovers, you would you would suspect a win. So defensively, allowing forty two points, it's, that's not like the Colts, and they're going to get that right in a big way. Yeah, well, they said upset. I mean, that, that's an upset. Tay Walker says, "Go Cooper, number fifty two. I don't know why I keep flexing. The emoji was only there one time. <laughs> Ugh, man, Sons, remember when I used to have muscles? Suns out, guns out. Ain't that the truth? Well, that's going to take us to our two A sports coverage, Dave. And let's start with the game we were at, the Benson Bobcats." Against the Tombstone Yellow Jackets. What a game that was. Benson gets the victory, goes to 2-2 two and two on the season, and opens their section play 1-0. and oh. Tombstone does drop to 2-2 two and two now, and now is 0-1 oh in their section. It was a 14-12 to 12 victory for the Benson Bobcats, who will play at Bisbee, the game we will be at uh, this Friday. And then Tombstone goes at Wilcox, so we're going to find out a lot about our playoff picture in Cochise County for the two A teams. Well, what the game that we were at, it was a defensive battle. Like neither team could cross the fifty. It was awesome to watch. And all of a sudden in the fourth quarter, DJ goes nuts, big bombs downfield, and then Dawson Jug comes back and leads Benson back to the victory. What a game. What an absolutely yeah. great game. The Tombstone defense, the Benson defensive line, my God. Goodness. Yeah, I mean, if, there are some stats there. I can't. I didn't write them down, but I think it was 24 carries for Tombstone for 34 yards. Yeah. No, there wasn't 50 rushing yards for either side in yeah. that game. It was crazy. Mindy Krause going back to Buena says that Bach is a lineman, lineman, linebacker. It's all the same. The big men, the most athletic players on the field, showing you why. But, yeah, back to this game, David. It was it was cagey for the first couple of quarters. There was a, a, a turnover on downs for Tombstone in the first half that could have led to points. Dawson Judd fumbled going in that could have led to points. The five and couldn't put it and in. That's what that's exactly with yeah. Benson too. So the first half there was a couple mistakes where it could have been a little bit more on the uh, scoreboard there. Third quarter again just jabs being thrown and then like you said fourth quarter everything exploded. The quarterbacks remembered that my little brother, a quarterback in Kansas City himself, was there and they just started dealing. You talked about the DJ throw. How about that last order. drive that Dawson Judd led, man? Yeah. That was nuts from the, the events of Bob. Yeah, yeah, what a game to be at. I mean, again, Tombstone took the lead with two minutes and five seconds left. And so it required a quick two-minute drive from the Bobcats to come back and win that game. It was a it was a great game, game of the year. Oh, but well, yeah, hopefully so not. Far. But so so far, <laughs> so far, so, so far, far, game of the year. Yeah, it's close. That copper pick, that was a good one too. Yeah, but, I mean, again, this is what yeah, Benson scored with ten seconds left on the clock or something like that. Bad time. And again, uh, by the way, DJ, if you're out there watching, I know that you twisted your knee at the last play. We haven't gotten confirmation. Let me know if you're okay. Like, I, I heard about Hank. I mean, and we know what happened there. Let me know if you're okay, DJ, Like, because I, I was slightly concerned. I mean, my words were, if I find out the DJ's hurt, I will cry. Those Emilio Mendez in the chat says, that Tombstone Benson game, he flexed, was epic. What a game, boys. Absolutely it was, and especially the fourth quarter. And I do want to say we did give uh, – 
prayers and condolences to Hank Moody, who will be back playing hopefully this year in baseball. It just depends on how the collarbone heals. But I do want to give some shout-outs to everyone in the chat, Benson and Tombstone fans, while that was going on. It was a scary situation. Everyone had prayers up, and every on both sides, everyone was just wishing him well. And it's nice when uh, people can put the swords away and come together, especially when uh, that, something like that. That was happens. our first one of those, like doing games together, and it was especially because we know these kids and we, and we love these kids. That was terrifying. So I'm glad that Hank is okay. Well, Absolutely, you're relatively speaking. So let's get to some stats here. Dawson Judd for the Benson Bobcats, quarterback that led that last touchdown drive. He looked good. He looked really good. 13 of 26, 164 yards in this ball game. Uh, He did have one touchdown throwing. He also ran the ball 15 carries, 49 yards for a touchdown as well. Flint Davis, leading ball carrier for the Bobcats, 19 carries for 80 yards. Good rushing on the ground. I was told they didn't have 50 yards. Well, you were wrong. And it wasn't me. Jason Santo, and I saw Santo. this. Santo won the Benson Bobcat player of the game. Well-deserved as well. Four catches, 71 yards, and an interception. Yeah, he had also, also added a few tackles, but every play he made was in a big spot. Dude. How about that Dawson Judd interception, though? He came out of nowhere. That was a wide-open play. Dawson Judd came out of left field to steal that ball. Spoiler, right? Dawson Judd had an interception. When we get to defensive stats, for sure. You know, hey, I was there. All right, I saw it. So that would be Santo and Judd both getting interceptions. Like you said, Judd from out of nowhere. I thought it was a touchdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came out of nowhere to get that ball. He was not losing that ball game. Let's just say that the performance Dawson Judd had. David Harris had five catches for 59 yards and a touchdown. Hell, yeah, Harley, we heard that name a lot in that game. Harley Van Warmer, eight tackles, a few in the backfield. Also a sack. And Samuel Martin, who we haven't really got to shout out, had a big game. We were calling his name all the time on the broadcast. Also had a sack in this one as well. So that's your stats for the Benson Bobcats. We go over to the Tombstone Yellow Jackets. DJ Lee is 10 of 21, 142 yards, one touchdown, two picks. One, one interception was basically a punt on third down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so you can't really fault him for that. DJ did look like he was a little rusty to begin the game. He wasn't as accurate as he uh, usually is. The fourth quarter came around, and he turned it on in a big way. Oh, man, I wish I could stand up and show you. When DJ threw that touchdown, the way he did, the way DJ does it, just <laughs> kicking the foot, like, oh, it's, man. Right? That's why we waited the whole game, and we're like, telling your brother about number, like, about number five, and mm-hmm. we're like, and there it is right there, that, foot, that 50-yard bomber. Whew, that was beautiful. Jabari Thomas. Yeah, there it is. I think you know, Anno- for the name in my head. Another candidate for why our wide man, we're gonna have to go to a spread offense this year on <laughs> our old coach easing team. Five catches, 118 yards, and a touchdown. Also provided the tackle for loss in the backfield. Jamiah Wallace, Andrew Gracemore, and Vlad Velasquez also with a tackle for loss in Velasquez had a sack as well as Caden Bidgood had a sack as well. Been that, very good. That kid he's been good, brother. Yeah. Bidgood's been good, let me tell you. So that was the game of the week, and did it live up to expectations? Again, a lot of people had eyes on that game. We were excited. It's always fun when we have a lot of people in the chat. What we have realized, Dave, is we can't really keep up with the chat. When yeah, there's no, we, 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 well, there. Our viewers are getting overwhelming, and so uh, we try during these games to keep up with the chat, but there's a lot of y'all. So, <laughs> so we definitely appreciate it. We all focus on the kids, you know what I mean, and not the chat, you know, but when we can, we do. And that's going to take us over to the Wilcox Cowboys who had a decisive win over Santa Rita, 65-12. to 12. That moves them up to 2-2. Two 12 two. points, Wilcox? Really? I, I know who you played. Unnecessary stray bullets at Santa Rita. Just wouldn't be a show without them, folks. That moves them to 1-0 in the section, and they will be at Bisbee. This game was over before the team got off the bus, and the reason... No, at Bisbee's next week. They got Tombstone this week. What did I say? You said at Bisbee. That's next oh, week. Oh, Tombstone. I wrote it down. Thank God. That's why we keep him here, folks. There. Yeah, no, no, no. They got Wilcox they got is home, next week. home to Tombstone this week. Don't ask me. What. I do these when my girls and, and that's sleep, when we start When we start getting into these sectional games, all of a sudden that game is huge. Tombstone or Wilcox, somebody is going to have a bad day. Somebody, Tombstone can ill afford to go in 0-2. Yep, yep. Especially if they want to replicate the the success they had last year. Wilcox scheduled tough opponents in the beginning, so they're two and two now. You know they want to go two and zero in the section and come out and steal the section like they did last year. That all of a sudden became a huge game. And Wilcox will play the teams tough. They will they will make it a grind them out game, and we're going to see at the end who comes out on top. Wilcox or Tombstone? It's going to come down to the last drive. Mo- yeah, more yeah, times yeah. No, that's, that's, we saw the Tombstone defense. That is going to be a three nothing game. 
So whoever gets the three is going to win that game. Maybe, maybe not, because Ismael Cuevas in this game had four carries for 100 yards and two touchdowns. Dang. So he was pulled after the first quarter. Caleb, oh, yeah, that's right. That's, it, was, it was like 59 Never mind, I understand the half. 12. No, like I forgot. 59 nothing and half, I think, is what the game was. It was. Never mind, I understand. We were getting score updates, and we couldn't keep up with the chat. We couldn't keep up with the touchdowns in the first well, half. I know Wilcox, Wilcox has Cowboys. put in their, what, 8 through 10 squad for the fourth quarter. Oh, come on. And they were able to... <laughs> To hold, to hold them to 12. <sighs> Nobody from Santa Rita is watching. It doesn't. Why do you have to take it that far, though? Santa I'm, Rita, kids, go out there, play the game, get better, and, and don't stick listen it, to and, Dave and Davies. shove it up me yeah, and tell me what time it is. I hope Santa Rita wins the whole darn thing next year. It'd be like, oh, yeah, there you go, Dave. <laughs> there you go. They have a picture of you with the dartboard on Yeah, you're not lying. Uh, that's good. Uh, Caleb Cook, shout out offensively. Usually talk, talk about him on the defensive side. Had four carries for 72 yards and a touchdown. Landed Ward, the warden, had two carries for 56 yards and a touchdown. Man. Jesus Duran, or Jesus Duran, whatever you want to say it, had three carries for 49 yards and a touchdown. First time we mentioned his name this year. The rifle, Remington Todd, carried the ball one time for 25 yards and a touchdown. What is this, Oprah? <coughs> Who wants a touchdown? That's 65 points, man. They had My to get goodness. Defensively, Caleb Cook had a tackle for loss. The Warden, Landon Ward, led the team with two interceptions. Remington Todd, the rifle, had an interception himself. Allen Allred, 14 tackles, one in the backfield for a loss. And Asher Ward, remember that last name, freshman, also got a sack in this game. Congratulations to the Wilcox Cowboys coming back with a vengeance starting 1-0 in sections. That was their get-right game, and they got right. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, so again, big one coming up on Friday for Everybody, everybody has a big game. Buena Pueblo, they all have big games. That's going to take us to the Bisbee Pumas. We have a million in the chat. Can't wait to hear what he has to say about this. The Bisbee Pumas moved to three and one after a twenty-six to nothing victory over Catalina. They are now one and zero in sections. They host the Benson Bobcats, the very, very tough Benson Bobcats, at Warren Ballpark this Friday, and that's going to be a clash of. Defense versus explosiveness, and who's going to come out on top? Well, Bisbee is, has been showcasing Lopez and Meyer all year long, and Coronado and boys, they look really good. That Benson defense, we're going to find out a lot on Friday because that Benson defense didn't give up nothing to DJ and Tombstone. And so, Bisbee, do you think your offense is right? Well, we're going to find out because Benson's going to bring it to you. So we are missing stats from Bryston Meyer. So he I, apparently did not play in this ball game. You remember it was a hard-hitting affair. Oh, uh, yeah, the week guess, before, yeah, yeah. and a lot of people went down. So hopefully Bryson Myers okay when we start the uh, the real sections here for the Bisbee Pumas and the Benson Bobcats if we get both teams at full strength. So, well, apparently with, Lopez's hand is okay because you know. <laughs> Joseph Coronado in the chat says hashtag Puma Pride, and Emilio Mendez says let's go Pumas. Hey, you didn't leave him out to dry on that one. Congratulations, Dave. Sebastian Lopez picked up the slack where Bryson Meyer was gone through 17 of 27 for 173 yards and a touch. Every freaking where Sebastian Lopez. It's called Do Not Disturb, my friend. I know, right? But, yeah, uh, Sebastian Lopez, senior year, and uh, he's showing you why he is the uh, wants to be considered the premier athlete in Cochise County. Well, it looks like everything's good. It looks like we can broadcast through a phone call. That's good. <sighs> anyway, back to it. Yeah, Sebastian Lopez, 376 total yards, four total touchdowns for the quarterback extraordinaire for the Bisbee Pumas. Been doing it for four years, our old coach Easy and quarterback. And what I'm more excited about, Dave, no turnovers in this ballgame. Well, you know, and it, not only that, but, you know, as Lopez gets bigger, like, this is one of those things high school athletes deal with where it's press. Like, there are people flying up to him after these games, and he has to do all these interviews, and he composes himself so well. You know, it's not easy for a 17, maybe 18-year-old kid, you know, to deal with that. And Lopez is dealing with it every game because everybody wants a piece of Sebastian Lopez. Well, we had him first. Just wait till Jackson Alvarez gets to be a junior and sing. <laughs> oh, he's gonna be all he that. He's gonna, look, he's gonna look like prime time that kid's with not fur coats. Pull any punches? I've heard stories about Jackson in middle school and what he would talk as well. And that boy definitely knows his way around words. Let me tell you, Jackson Alvarez, the. Uh, Confident sophomore for the Bisbee Pumas who took over running back duties in this game for Bryson Meyer. 13 carries for 82 yards. Also, four catches, 42 yards, over 100 total yards for Jackson Alvarez. Contributed a touchdown as well, receiving. If he was here, he'd let us know about it. <laughs> you have the sunglasses on and everything. 
Remember when we went to the dugout after the championship game? He said, that was, what did he say? That was easy. Oh, yeah, that was easy. <laughs> Something like that. Or it wasn't even close. The kid doesn't know, the kid doesn't know how to lose. Yeah, that's good. Oh, no, I started the wasn't even close thing, but, yeah, then everybody started chanting it. No, no, well, no, Jackson said it at the dugout. He was he was emphatic about it, too. <laughs> that guy was angry at Phoenix Christian, more angry than you are, <laughs> the Phoenix Christian team. Cougars. Can't stand him. <laughs> so Mason Richardson. I never thought I would hate a high school team in my life. <laughs> Leading receiver for the Pumas, four catches for 77 yards. That's going to move us to defense where the stats typically get exciting for the Pumas. Led in tackles by Fabian Hernandez with 17. Also had a tackle and a half in the, back, in the backfield and a sack in this ballgame as well, bringing his total, I believe, to 9.5 or 10.5 on the season. A lot. A yeah, lot no of sacks. Second in tackles, Michael Coronado, 13 tackles and a forced fumble in this ballgame. Spencer Anthony also tied for second in tackles with 13. Tackling fuel. <laughs> Tackling fuel. Jackson Alvarez. Rounds out the double-digit tackles with 10. Also had one in the backfield as well as Spencer er, Spencer Anthony, Cam Anderson, Javi Montiel, and Tristan Meyer each with a tackle for loss in the backfield. Cam Anderson, he had a really good game against what was not Arizona Lutheran? What? No, uh, Santan Charter? I Santan, know, my, who knows? Anyway, he was neutralizing the number one receiver for Oh, for, yeah, 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 for sure. For a very long time. He added an interception and recovered the fumble forced by Michael Coronado in this game. Tristan Meyer and Sebastian Lopez also contributing interceptions to three picks. Oh, Tristan Meyer got an interception. All right. Hey, what's up, Peyton? Jojo Velasquez in the chat says, Jackson, EJ Party Reynolds, nephew. Everyone's giving the strength. We have to flex. We mm-hmm. have to flex now. So that's going to do it for the Bisbee Pumas and all of our high school coverage. Congratulations to the team that won. Buena's is going to get back on track. St. David definitely getting back on track. And a lot of things that we heard, because we weren't eavesdropping, but we were definitely eavesdropping. Some uh, parents weren't happy with the officiating. Like you said, coaches thought they played a good game. The ball didn't bounce their way at times. So we expect St. David to be there at the end, as we always do. Our Offensive Player of the Week is going to be none other than Sebastian Lopez, who I do believe is our first two-time winner this year. I said, he's here, he's there, he's your Player of the Week. 376 yards and four touchdowns. Harley Van Warmer, our Defensive Player of the Week for the Benson Bobcats. It might be a little bit biased because we were there and we watched him play, and he made impact play after impact play, eight tackles and a sack in the ball game, and, of course, some few in the backfield as well. We, we were at that game. Our Defensive Player of the Week was coming out of that game. Like, no matter <laughs> what. Absolutely that had to game, be. Like, you like defense, you go watch that game. You could give a shout-out to Fabian Hernandez for co-defensive player of the week. I've done that before. Two and two when you can't choose. 17 tackles, sack, and a tackle and a half in the backfield. That kid is on pace to be the first non-quarterback Cochise County player of the year, let me tell you. Anyway, so, yeah, it is time to start with our power rankings. Dave, get the Douglas Bulldog hat out as they start as our number 10 team. This is starting to hurt my feelings with Douglas. Yeah, we don't have a hat, but that moves ALA of Sierra Vista up to our number nine spot. Just need that. We should have got the Royals hat. Have the Royals hat. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. They're going to represent ALA going forward. And then number eight, the Berean Academy Eagles are our number eight team. They're two and two on the season after a forfeit win. And they there's going to be some growing pains when you jump up two divisions. It's like Wrexham. Those Everyone, forfeits, you wait all week to play that game. That's got to just crush you. Everyone knows Wrexham from the, the show with Mar McElhaney and Ryan Reynolds. That's like if they jumped to the premiership right now. They did a preseason tour in America and lost 7 to nothing to Chelsea or something like that. That's So the fact that they've got two There's wins right now, I, I'm really excited for the Eagles, and uh, hopefully they continue to win and we can get some playoff coverage going. <coughs> I ran out of cough drops, can you tell? That's going to take us to our number seven team falling the most – They've, of any team this year, the Tombstone Yellow Jackets. It's tough. It's tough, but we got really good teams coming up. It's hard to crack the top five in Cochise County in football, let me tell you. I get, I get, I have no favorites in this thing. I want to say Tombstone will be back, but they got a tough Wilcox game, so I mean, just go do it. We we just here to report it, okay? Not, Not to predict it, just to report it. Number six. Just outside of the top five, the Benson Bobcats in that fresh new hat. Let me grab that one for you. Thanks, Olivia. Thank you, Olivia. 
Much obliged. Those things are selling for thirty five dollars a piece. That's you know how nice tr- of a gift that was. They tried to give us one last year. It was our opening game, and this is when I still didn't want to impose on people because, you know, you know me. I'm just not that person. So I was like, oh, we'll give it back to you. And they tried to give it to me. I'm like, no, 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 make your money. But oh, It fits you, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a small as well. That's weird. weird. Maybe I'm getting dumber and my brain's shrinking. Who knows? I'm definitely getting dumber for sure. We're going to start off our top five with the Wilcox Cowboys. Big win over Santa Rita, 2-2. Two and two, And I truly believe the Wilcox Cowboys have a very – Hi, it's your boy. That's what I said. I said hi to him. <laughs> Good. How you doing, brother? Um. Yeah. So the Wilcox Cowboys, we've we've seen them this year, and we we got to watch them again on broadcast. The way they ball handle in the backfield has popped Landon Ward open a few times, and I feel like that's that's a reason why I give them the edge over the Benson Bobcats right now. Could be wrong. These mean nothing. Just play. Oh, I just realized somebody made a huge leap. The Valley Union Blue Devils at number four, three and one, Ooh. one and zero oh in sections, and a chance this. Friday, Dave, to jump all the way up to number two slash number one. We don't know what happened. Yeah, it depends on what the outcome of that game is because they are playing the toughest test. Now our top three teams, is there a shakeup? St. David lost. Buena lost. Bisbee won. No, there's not. Bisbee is number three. St. David is number two. And Buena still remains at number one. Subject to change this week. We have a lot of big games. There's going to be some shakeups in these rankings, Dave. I, again, I wish there was more of us. Because we have big, big games. I wish that I could be at all three of them. I think we do a good job of getting everyone covered. If you think about yeah. it, Buena gets covered all year. Every week. Yeah. St. David, David. David and Valley Union are going to be broadcast. Bisbee and Benson are going to be broadcast. Wilcox and Tombstone are going to be broadcast. Barine goes off on Thursdays. They're Probably going to be, be broadcast. broadcast, yeah. ALA got broadcast last week. Um, yeah, we, we do our best. We really, really do. Uh, we try to make it as even as we can. Douglas um, had the copper pick, but Douglas, if you want us out there, what do we say, Dave? Yeah, if you ball, you, if you want to you want, you want the call, you got a ball. You got a ball. And, and, and it's, a, it's a little thing for, for anybody that might be thinking otherwise. Just so you know, out of all these teams that are here, the one that is closest to our house and also has a booth happens to be Bisbee. So when we have our interconference games and you guys are going to Bisbee, we're not picking Bisbee because we like Bisbee better. We're picking it because it's easier. For everybody. That booth, it, that booth makes a difference. It makes it a lot easier than sitting in the stands trying to like look at your papers you know, with the wind and everything. So just so you know, there's no favorites here. It just makes our lives a lot easier having a booth to sit down in. Yeah, if you haven't noticed, we do go to booths. That's what, and shout out to Wilcox who sh- broke us off an area yeah, right yeah, next yeah, to the yeah. booth. So. Yeah, like you guys in the booth, but they did their best to accommodate. Everybody always does. So, like, you know, it's, uh, even like, yeah, like last week in Benson, you know, we're on top of the booth, but it's windy and it's hard to hold your papers and... You know, so I just so you folks know, we it's don't have favorites. It's a little bit more complex now. We definitely need power sources. Yeah, yeah. We don't just have our phones and we're praying that we, we don't lose charge or anything like that. And that's going to so do just, it. So, just so you know, just for you folks at home know. That's going to do it for our high school coverage. Dave, how do you feel about the power rankings? I uh, know that's about right. I think uh, Bisbee is doing their best to get into that top three. Or so, but they're going to have to earn it against that Benson defense. Yeah, you know, the, the jury's still out. And we're going to see a lot when the coaches teams go at it. You know, these two teams, they're built for football. And if Bisbee wants to jump up to that one spot, they're going to have to take out these two in a big way. Yeah, back-to-back and, weeks, they have Benson and Wilcox. So we're going to find out what we need to know about the Bisbee Pumas. And let's, those not, are two defenses. let's not forget about Tombstone as well. DJ Elias is shaking the rust off. If he is able to go next week, I fully expect him to be back to DJ Elias form. Well, again, their, their, their worst defensive <laughs> game of the year was against Benson, and they gave up 14 whole points. Hey, so Sylvia's Tombstone watching. defense is ridiculously good. Shout out, Kobe. All right, Dave. That's going to do it for now, finally, for our high school coverage. And you typically have some questions for me. Is that the case today? Three question quizzy for Pizzy. Hey. All right. Uh, the, name's, the name's getting me a little bit now. I like it now. All off, uh, all NFL all day. We know what the fans want to hear. Pizzy, we're already in panic mode in the NFL. <laughs> Who's on the hot seat? Which Zach. coach is getting fired first? And you can't. Oh, I mean, I guess you could say Doug Peterson because he should have been fired by Zach Taylor. Show. Doug Ooh, Peterson. You're firing Zach Taylor oh, already? Oh, no, no. I'm just saying the hot seat right now. Oh. Zach, uh, Zach Taylor, Doug Peterson, um, Mike McDaniels, McDonald's. Uh, who's the head coach? I can't remember. The Cowboys. No, McCarthy. Mike McCarthy. Thank you. Thinking about your coach. He's not going anywhere. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. An interesting one is John Harbaugh as well. He There's been. 
called for him to lose his job for about three years now because the the narrative now is that he can't he won a Super Bowl but he can't get it done in the playoffs now. A lot of them I didn't expect to hear. Antonio Pierce is on the hot seat. They looked tragic against the Carolina Panthers. Um, And then Matt Eberflus for the Chicago Bears. He's on the hot seat as well. Uh, You could put the Panthers up there, but I love how they're already placing the blame for the kid on of everybody else. Oh, it's Eberflus' system. That's why the kid doesn't work. Oh, he doesn't have the right coach. It's not necessarily about Caleb Williams with Eberflus. It's that Justin Fields, albeit he doesn't look good. Steelers are three and zero. The offense still looks as tragic as it's ever looked in Pittsburgh, but they are three and zero. That's Justin Fields' first three game winning streak of his career. He leaves mm-hmm. Chicago, and all of a sudden he starts winning. That's where the Eberflus thing is coming into play. Um, God, I wish the Eagles would have lost. I would have told you Nick Sirianni was going to be. He should be on the hot seat anyways. I would say the the very first coach probably out, and it just speaks to the organization who they are. If they keep losing, would be Zach Taylor. Because I don't believe the Cincinnati Bengals are a well-run organization. Yeah, I, I think that they are overrated, overhyped, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, if, if the Bengals turn it around, they go to go to two and three, which is going to be tough with the Ravens coming in. Um, then you go. Obviously, Doug Peterson's getting canned. It's amazing how the more you lose, the bigger the games get. Well, all of a sudden, like oh and three, and you have Baltimore coming in. And you're like, oh my god, it's was over. Zach Taylor on the it's hot? It's over. Was Zach Taylor on the hot seat before the season? No. Was Doug Peterson? Kind of, but everyone thought they'd turn it around. But after Buffalo, I, I would have fired him after that game. That's what I was telling a guy at the uh, at the bar last night. I was like, we're getting close to Halloween. There's a horror movie on TV right now because Buffalo is slaughtering the Jacksonville Jaguars. Speaking of horror movie, check out our main event that's going to be filmed tonight for Thunder Mountain Wrestling. Oh, I got a couple of I got a couple of things to say about some wrestlers. <laughs> I can't wait. All right, so there you go. Hot seat question. Question number two. Since 1970, only six teams in the NFL history have gone 0-3 and made the playoffs. Who do you like at 0-3 to make the playoffs? If anybody. If anybody. Who's 0-3? We've got the Titans. We have the, the Jaguars and the Bengals. Ugh. I mean, smart money is on the Bengals, but they're in that AFC North. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be so hard. It's going to be so hard. The Cleveland Browns are the only team that looked like they shouldn't be there because of their quarterback. You got the steel. The Steelers are three and zero. They got off to a hot start, and that plays a part in what we're talking about here. The Ravens got their first win, so everyone's ahead of them. I, I, Did you, you say can, playoffs? You can go with none. Yeah, you can go with nobody. Oh, with three making the playoffs. Not even the Giants can I have say, a win. Can I go reverse and say the Jacksonville Jaguars aren't going to get a win this year? No. Oh, they will. They will. They'll turn it around. The professional are players. They, sure? have, they have pride. That's funny. If Will Levis wasn't the quarterback, yeah, that's why it's only happened six times. If Will the Levis, Titans are in tight games every week, like these are tight, tight. And games. Will Levis is trying to be Patrick Mahomes. Throwing it he's away. definitely not. Or Josh Allen would be a better comp because he's got his size. Yeah, the Titans have played three tight games. We're winning two, and of they're them. in the AFC South, which is Houston, Indy, Tennessee, and Jackson. I'll I'll pick the Titans. Ooh, they can come back. Yeah, no, I mean organizationally, they they look the part right now. They're doing everything right. Levis is just throwing it away. I believe Cincinnati will get there, I think. But it, they just lost to Washington. Washington, Carolina, you're supposed to be 2-2 two and two after this year. Now you're going 1-3. and three. If if you beat Carolina, because the Red Rocket, Andy Dalton, is uh, dealing first quarterback this season. Red Rocket is back. Three touchdowns, man, let me tell you. But So you're 1-3 you're and three or 0-4. Oh, oh, we do have a comment in the chat from Sandy Laguna. that says, best wishes today. For Bruin Academy volleyball team, good luck, girls. Go Sierra Vista. Absolutely. Right. I do nothing of it, but I'm glad we do now. <laughs> All right. Me too. Root for Every, all things, hey, so. Any Sierra Vista sports coaches, county sports you guys got, we'll give it a shout out. All right. Um, and let's see here. And the last one. Let's go ahead and flip the script right now. We have some 3-0 and teams in the NFL. Who's a fraud? Which one of these teams is a fraud? Who isn't making the playoffs at 3-0? and you're not going to hurt my feelings. Pittsburgh, Kansas City, Seattle, Phillies 2-1. and one. Chargers Detroit, lost. Green Bay has a loss. I think uh, Minnesota. Minnesota's 3-0, oh, that's right. <coughs> um, now one of those teams is fraudulent. Houston just lost. Buffalo's 3-0. and oh. Whew. It's tough. They all look good. And again, the answer can be none. I wouldn't say frauds. The team least likely to make the playoffs. It might sound 
like an oxymoron because I just said how hard the AFC North was for the Bengals to come back. And I think the Steelers at 3-0 you know, with that generational defense they got going on right now, it could change. Teams could figure them out. But the Steelers, that defense, every time I watch the Steelers play, I could just picture T.J. Watt T.J. Watt, the strips, my strips at. goodness. He's still got Cam Hayward on the inside. Like That defense is so good. The corners are good. The safeties are good. They still have um, – and Fitzpatrick back there at safety, quarterbacking everything in the secondary. It's it's tough to say them. So I would say the Vikings. And it's, it sucks because I have a lot of Vikings fans <laughs> that I know as friends. So I do apologize in advance. But with Sam Darnold at quarterback, I mean, I think they've done a great job this year. And I do believe they'll be in the playoffs. But if I was to have anyone falter. 3-0 and o is not enough to be like selling me like, oh yeah, this is guaranteed. I'll see you in the playoffs. Like, we've seen enough of Sam Darnold Statistically, Caleb Williams had a pretty good game, even though we saw the game and he didn't really do much. Not but really. He threw for Check over, down King. He threw for over 300 yards, two touchdowns, two picks. Statistically, attempts. it's his best. It's 52 so there's, attempts. There's progress there. Um, then They're Green Bay is going to be... Yards Green Bay, carry. Matt LaFleur is proving to be one of the better coaches in the NFL with what he's done with uh, Malik Willis, who I got to see play the Kansas City Chiefs when he was with the Tennessee Titans, and he didn't even look like a running back. He was in the NFL. He wasn't that good. Yeah, it tells you what Lafleur is doing. Detroit NFC champion, runner ups last year. So it's a tough NFC North as well. So I would say, once we get to the to the division games, we'll see a lot about the Minnesota Vikings, and I would have to probably say that they miss the playoffs. All right, fair out enough. of all those teams, out of all those teams. Well, fair enough. Well, that was your three question quizzy. For Pizzy. I think that's going to do it. And apparently I don't have to give a disclaimer this time because not today. I guess he's not Rand nor Raven, which is what we call Dave. And also he's a jinx. So that's Dave and too. It's time for Dave's diatribe. Dave, take it away. You know, it's amazing. We're grown men, almost 40, over 40. And we still let a group of people that we've never met determine our attitudes for the week. And there's something about... Ah. There's something about being an NFL fan. When your team is undefeated, the water tastes a little better, the golf feels a little crisper, life is just good. If I was a Bengals fan right now, I'd be hiding in my room in the dark calling into work. Does this have something to do with the team from the Northwest? I'm the Seahawks fan. And I don't care whether we play three JV teams to open the season. I don't care. We're 3-0, and baby. Being undefeated, you're undefeated. Doesn't it feel good? It feels so good. So for all you sorry Bengals and Jaguars, I don't think Jaguars have fans. You know, Cardinal fans that are one and two, Niners, it's over. You know, it must suck to be you because it doesn't suck to be me. Not today, baby. Niners, I am laughing at you every single day of my life. Nobody deserves it more than you do. Watching the wheels just fall off the bus and everybody just flying all over the highway. I can't wait to watch your three-win season. You stink. Go Hawks. Spoken like a true Seahawks fan, Dave, let me tell you. Oh, it feels good. We actually have to play a real team this week. We have to actually play Detroit in Detroit, so that's going to be fun. But, uh, but yeah. But, yeah, we actually have to play a real team. But, boy, that defense looked good. But, but Miami scored three, reached for the Skyler, didn't deserve the three. Three and O's, three and O, any way you slice it. You said, uh, how happy is it to be a Chiefs fan? Like, I'll tell you. Blood pressure, man. Why do you think I have high blood pressure now? Oh, your team's having to earn it right now. We you, always you, have to earn There's a great You're, you're coming down to the last out. play every game. There's a great meme that's out, and I think it was before the Chiefs got a hold of it, but that's what we share every time. It's every time before the game, oh, I'm very excited to watch Chiefs play football. And then for three hours, I want to not – I want to un- unalive myself. <laughs> And then at the very end, it's like, hey, great, we got the win. We got the win again. <laughs> so, there you go. Got the win again. I'm sure there are people have their opinions on how you're getting those wins, but it doesn't matter. 3-0 and is 3-0. and Yeah, teams can't come over pen- overcome penalties like the Chiefs can. <laughs> or not get them called on them. Well, you know, but they did Just get it. them a hard time. 3-0 and is 3-0. and I mean, they did get walked down the field on the very last drive. Couldn't get a first down without the, the yellow flags coming up, but we'll not talk about that. We'll talk about the P.I. in the end zone that would have given the ball to back to Patrick Mahomes with less than a field goal lead, but whatever. Oh, by the way, folks, if you ha- <laughs> if you own a Miami Dolphins jersey and you have thrown a football in your life, they're having open tryouts tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., just so you know. They got um, Huntley. Huntley from the, the yeah, Ravens. He hasn't even activated yet. Uh, it's Tim Boyd. Tim Boyd is Tim your Boyle. answer. Tim Boyle. 
Tim Boyle. Get it right. There it is. There's the Tim Boyle deserves our respect. Reach for the 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 Skyler. Tim didn't make it out of the game. So anyway, I think that's going to do it. Defense is good. (laughs) Woo! Before I get out of here, thank you so much to Sierra Vista Golf Center of Pueblo del Sol. It's 80 degrees outside. I'm going to be out there in about 20 minutes. We're going to catch up with Peyton. I'm going to go show him how to play this game. You're welcome. Not, I stink. And uh, again, thank you so much to Jaime, managing partner, and Ashley Romack, the manager over at Texas Roadhouse. 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 We have a Dine to Donate program. If you have a charitable cause, we had one last night. I'll be there today, 345. Come in and have dinner. Come hang out with me. Come say hi. See you on Friday in Bisbee, baby. Ooh, Bobcat <laughs> defense looking good. We wanted to split up. It was told we couldn't split up. That's what we were told. So we said, okay. But anyway, one more time, thank you to Synergy Home Care of Sierra Vista, providing non-medical home care for people that struggle with activities of daily living all across Cochise County, all across Santa Cruz County. If you know anyone that might qualify for that, give us a call at 520-685-1035. Get your journey started. If you just need information, call the office. They're the best in the business. How many times people have thanked us just for knowing how to get this process started. Anyway, that's going to do it for us here. Dave Davies, Paul Quarter, the Cochise County Sports Show presented by Synergy Home Care. We will see you Friday.